Hello, this is Will Timpson with CAD Craftsman back with our small crane project. Now, your output are your drawings. And from what I have seen and what many of my customers have told me, the drawings seem to be the last thing that other packages are concerned with. So that is certainly not true with Steel Designer Pro. We handle all of your drawings, all of your revisions, DXF files, DSTV files, and the like. That's the part that should be easy. So I realized I needed a little bit of information on this component. Uh, it kind of needs a material. That way it will have a correct mass. We'll update it, save it. And now we're going to run consolidation. First, I am going to set my marks to use the shortest marks possible. And set my component marks. And those work. Ah, I go ahead and take one more digit off of there. And now we're going to turn consolidation back on. And the interface shows up, and this is what allows you to keep from changing marks. We'll process all of these. And it appears yes I missed something so I'm gonna go back to my projects tab back to the command center and the projects and I want project settings oops excuse me project specifications use a template that way all of my now we'll run our let our consolidation run again so that we can get our plate grades in There we go. Now, we handle drawings through our document manager. Tools, I'm going to hide the assembly envelopes. Go to my documents tab, document manager. And I can grab all the, the types to be able to sort things. A very convenient, I can click over on the left side, shift click, and I will typically open batches of 15 drawings at a time to be able to check them. So now you have the ability to run a macro over each drawing, export them, ex issue them to your customer. Here's use mark, import marks, add the bill of materials, hide dangling dimensions, swap out the sheet templates. And this is for the sheet templates that are in your project. Select welded member packs. So you can select a particular welded member and all of its components to operate on at once. Import a GA drawing. If you create a GA drawing, this is how you get it into your document manager. 
save it as a PDF, DWG or DXF, um, view the PDF, add the revision to the file title, change revisions, which I usually do that just before I make everything into PDFs. Override drafting standards. Your drafting standard is automatically going to get swapped for the one in your project. It's best to just save over those. Edit custom properties allows you to change all the custom properties that you'll see in the drawing. And of course leave open and open commit fires everything to run. So we're going to open all these plate drawings and check them. Hides the dangling dimensions, puts the bill of material on there. Updates the drawings. And now that all the drawings are open, I can go through and clean out and delete any extra dimensions or add the dimensions that I want, reposition things, rebuild it, save it. That plate, apparently I didn't change the whole size. Close it. So it appears that those match. So we'll just delete the extra one. Drag these things down so you can see them. Well, I'm going to add one more to that dimension. Oop. And add a dimension to the whole size. I need to edit that plate drawing in my library to make that stupid border stop showing up. So what we're going to do is control click and put an intersection point. Click, put an intersection point. There we go. So we just clean up our drawings.
add dimensions where we've changed the plate so much that we lost the dimensions from the library. Oh, come on. Let go, SolidWorks. And that was all the plate drawings. Tick those off, and we'll tick all the section drawings. And open those. Now, since the tube came from the library, it'll have redundant drawings on it or excuse me, redundant dimensions because it's set up to do most anything. There we go. And as I mentioned at the beginning, those are the data fields that are automatically populated. <laughs> All right. So we might do things like change that to a reference dimension, delete that. I could delete the break probably if I wanted to. Let's pull that out a little more to where it shows better. reposition oh. and that becomes a reference dimension drag the break over a little that's a little redundant and that does it for the section drawings and we only have two weldment drawings we'll open both of those now there's a warning that's going to come up and it shows up on my other screen asking me if I am really sure if I want to update the bill of materials and somehow I managed to lose it. Ah, there it is. And this is so if you're processing the drawings at a later time you may not want to update your bill of materials. But since this is the initial run, we certainly want to update them. And since this one was created from scratch, there's, it needs to be cleaned up. Now is when I pull my, pull that back over, properties down, change my scale a little bit so that I can SolidWorks their stupid border. put some center lines on things so 
that all of this shows up. Now I can quickly add all the dimensions that I need for fabrication. Reposition them. Now we're going to add balloons to everything. And I can use the insert view marks, but for welded members, these tend to be much easier to just place manually. certainly up to you if I'm doing piping I balloon every item in every location and check to make sure that everything in here so we got one two three four and seven one two three four and seven and one two and three one two and three are all located on the drawing. So there's our first drawing. Weldman drawing. So now go ahead and Mark everything here. And of course, how you do your drawing is very much up to you and your fab shop. And let's see your rejog. Get my stuff separate. So my check dimensions for the beam. And I would probably want to make this bigger. Solid works. No matter how many times I delete these borders, come back like a bad penny. Now I have the beam mark here on structural jobs. I'm very particular about my marking and that keeps track of everything and its orientation. So we got plates six and seven, section four. One more dimension to locate these. And 
there we go. So now I would create a general arrangement drawing of this. For me, that's just new drawing. Change it to the general arrangement size. Oops. And size it up to get. And no matter how many times you delete this, it will always come back. So put whatever you need in the way of assembly dimensions. You can put notes at this point. I would note that there's two inches of grout underneath this. Now, I will typically have a drawings folder. to keep all of my general arrangement drawings in. And how you name those is up to you. You can put a bill of material on here however you like. I'll come back to my document manager, clear this, I'll import a GA drawing. It goes to that folder. Oops. Okay. So, let me restart my document manager. Aha, there we go. And by double clicking on this, I get a preview of it, the drawing number, the drawing description. That I can change and update. Now, I'm going to select all of these drawings and I do not want to leave them open or update their bill of materials. Swap sheet template is also not necessary but I do want to edit their custom properties. Now this is the default and I can add a new one. Now I'll go through and
change these to be what I want them to be. I can fill it in and say checked by, checked by date. All of this information is going in to the drawing. Uh, I highly recommend the not for construction watermark. Uh, job numbers, you can use those however you like. I highly recommend using your project numbers to get your job numbers. And we'll update this one. Tick OK to get out. Now I'm going to change the revision and I want to update the current revision, make it revision zero. Issued for approval. And normally there's no checked by on the approval, but that's totally up to whatever you're doing. So that doesn't set until I've processed these. Pull this out of the way and let it run. So now it's updating all of the custom properties in the sheet, which is the sheet template, adding the revision, and it'll run through all of those drawings now that I've selected. And you can do most of your checking at this point, looking at them to make sure that you didn't miss anything while they're running through. So that's all done. And since I didn't update the PD, I didn't create the PDFs at that same time I changed revisions, it's best to close this that I don't end up with a second revision writing being done. Do not want the bill of materials swap sheet template. Do not want to leave it open, but I do want to save as PDF, but not view the PDF or otherwise everything goes wanky on you. Now it's going to create a PDFs file for the project. And begin saving all of the PDFs into that file. So you can then combine them, email them out, whatever you need to do. There must be a revision on the plates prior to creating the DXF files. It doesn't create DXF files of blank revision plates.
Now we've created all of our PDFs. So now we, you can combine those in any way that you like to be able to send them out. Close this now. Very most of the time I will have a configuration that's either working or all suppressed. And that configuration is handy for working on things and for processes like creating plate DXFs. It runs faster when there's nothing, when it's all suppressed. These run anywhere from 3 to 12 a minute, depending on how fast your computer is. And how complicated your plates are. Now, Steel Designer Pro has created a plate DXFs folder to put these in. It creates a SOLIDWORKS part of the plate and the DXF as well. So you have always, ha always have the part that it was actually created from. I'll put those in another folder and it has ran them all. So these SOLIDWORKS parts, I drag out, stick them out of the way, and we name our plates, plate DXF, with the mark, which was 1PL001. It's a half inch thick, A36 grade, and you need one of those. You need four of plate seven. So whomever's running your burn table has all of the information on the DXF file. And that is the project completely processed and ready to go in about an hour and 45 minutes. Thank you very much.